Good morning and welcome to the Pawbrain Comedy Podcast. It is April 20th, 2024. This is episode 143 of the podcast. This is a podcast by a dreamer for all you dreamers out there. Stand-up comedian and actor Paul Green documenting my journey as I rise to greatness and glory as a comedian. So, I hope all of you are doing well. So, yesterday, a uh, pretty good day overall. I um, had two shows last night, and before the shows, I got some writing done. Didn't didn't come up with a lot of new material. I wrote a little bit, as um, all of you know who follow the podcast. I have been holding to a couple of goals for myself. I've sort of adjusted my writing goal. It used to be three jokes. But then, once I got some mentorship about how I should be writing and that I need to be writing more of a different style, I haven't been too concerned about jokes because a joke could just be a one-liner. So I've really just been trying to write a new bit every day, like a new premise, new concept, and to follow that format and to just start pulling on a new thread and see what happens. Um, And that's been going pretty well. Although yesterday I didn't... I don't like what I came up with yesterday. But I have committed to reading my new material... Uh, let's see. Where is... Oh, this is... I'm already telling you why it's not good, which is not good. I should just do the bit and not apologize in it beforehand. Um, so, um, one of the things that is obviously very annoying as a comedian is you always have people, friends, family come up to you and they'll say those inevitable words. Hey, hey, I got a funny joke for your act. And as soon as anybody says that, uh, you know you are about to hear a really long, boring story. Which is not funny at all. And has no chance in heck of making it into my act. Because it's just some, it's like something funny that happened to them. But when they start telling the story, it makes no sense. They'll just be like, oh, 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 oh yeah, so Paul, I got a joke for you. Uh, so the other day. I was at IHOP uh, with my family, uh, my wife, and my two kids. Um, My oldest son, he was at uh, volleyball practice because they're in the state championships. But um, that's not important. So anyway, so then uh, the server comes over. Turns out my wife and her used to go to high school together. Um, They weren't in the same grade. Uh, They were a couple years apart, so they didn't really hang out a lot. But they kind of like knew each other, right? So anyway, so they're talking blah, 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 blah. Okay. um, Oh, 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 by the way, it's, it's, uh, it's Tuesday. Uh, We usually go to IHOP on on Monday, but uh, Monday uh, I had a thing with work, so I wasn't able to go uh, to IHOP on uh, Monday. But okay, so it's Tuesday. Okay, so anyway, so my wife is uh, talking to the server, and then all of a sudden, another server drops a cup and it breaks, right? And then the server, she kind of like jumps, kind of just like startled, right? And then she goes, oh, sorry, I didn't didn't mean to to jump on you. And, and, And then I said, and then I said, yeah, because this isn't I jump. It's I hop. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's way too long. But you get the idea. The reason I don't like it already off the bat is because uh, you never want to be a comedian talking about comedy. You actually want to talk about anything else. So, much like the I hop, I jump joke will not be making it into my act the joke about people talking about the IHOP and the I joke will probably not uh, make it in my act. This is another idea that I was working on. Uh, Just pretty much goes, uh, you know, I I am a white man. Definitely not a good time in history to be a white man. Just like, you know, all of those crimes against humanity, you know, they're just finally catching up with us. And, uh, you know, we thought we could just commit just little acts of genocide throughout history and just get away scotch-free. But I got to say, you know, as white people go, you know, we kind of conquered America, kind of took it from the natives. 
But as conquering nations go, we, we you know, we were kind of nice, you know, like we stole all the land. But then, but then we gave a little back. We're like, we're taking this. But here's a little back. You know, it's like a, it's like if a bank robber just cleaned out a bank vault, right, of millions of dollars. And then a couple of days later was like, hey, my bad. Here's a couple hundred bucks for you. And then they're like, uh, yeah, but but you stole millions of dollars. It's like, well, hey, you know, you can take that couple hundred dollars and maybe put a down payment on a casino. Just look at the win. Look at the win win here. I do find that interesting. I, th- I think the white people, we kind of blew it on that whole uh, not legalizing gambling thing. It's kind of an interesting hypocrisy, right? You kind of have the Puritan ethic. So they come over, they, you know, we kind of steal the country. And, uh, you know, that's totally fine under the Puritan ethic. It's like, well, you can steal a country. Oh, but gambling, that's that's the devil's work. We will not allow any gambling in our country except for just one city in Nevada. But, okay. You don't need to tell me in the comments. I know it's bad. I don't like any of it either. But that is what I have to do. I have to write so much it to try to find bits that will work. So um, the good news is, so I had two shows last night at JP's Comedy Club in Gilbert, and I, um, I've i really mostly just been improvising my sets and doing sort of a lot of crowd work and then improvising a song about them because I just feel so lost when it comes to written material. It's like, I don't want to do any joke that I've ever told before, (laughs) even the ones that are kind of working. I really want to start over and just commit myself to really um, disciplining myself to the writing element and really trying to write with a new level of, um, of discipline. And... So while I'm doing that, I'm sort of cheating and just improvising my sets. However, in the second show, I went ahead and I tried out one of the new bits that I've written in the last two weeks. And it's actually a bit that I have shared on the Paul Green Comedy Podcast. And it went pretty well. It went pretty well. I actually watched the tape and I went, okay, it's not there yet. Still needs a lot of refining, but the initial premise, like the initial premise, the right up front joke, got a really big laugh, which tells me, okay, what I'm talking about is relatable. The people get it. They get my point of view and my honesty and my opinion is funny, which again is the new format that I'm trying to write under, um, If you're just joining the podcast, um, I had a comedian friend, his name's Andrew Norelli, who really pointed out to me what the top comedians today, sort of the general format that they write under. Um, In my words, in in sort of my deconstruction of it, it's a a four-pronged format. Um, Step number one is they state an observation or they just state what happened, and it's true. They're not making stuff up. It's just, this is what the comedian observed. That's if, it, if it's a comedian who's more of like an observational, like a Seinfeld, or kind of like a, a Bill Burr's a little bit of a hybrid. Jim Gaffigan's a little bit more observational, although he'll get personal sometimes. You don't got to be one or the other. It's just, what did I observe? Or what happened? What happened to me? What did I see? What was the experience? So that's step number one. Step number two is what did the comedian do in response? Or what does the comedian think? What did they think or what did they do? The third step is what is their opinion on what they did, what they thought, what happened, or what observed? So they express a very strong opinion. And then the fourth element is they then demonstrate. Um... Now, demonstration, I I used the term act out before. Act out is a little too specific. It's a little bit more broad than that. It's 
um, the way that my buddy Andrew um, described it is he said, just think of like you're a lawyer and you're in the courtroom and you just need to now provide evidence, right? So you just need to demonstrate, act out, give an analogy, give an example of um, what your opinion is or, you know, why, why you're... Uh, you yeah, really, you're just sort of proving your opinion. Um, let's think of an example. So I, well, I'll use the same example I used last time, which is a, a Brian Regan bit, because it's still top of mind. Because this is the bit that I watched that I then deconstructed, and then I started to see this see this same pattern everywhere. So the joke is, uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, although I had a I had a stomach virus uh, the other day. And I thought about uh, calling the ambulance. That's weird, though, right? Call the ambulance for yourself? You call the ambulance for other people. I mean, what am I supposed to say? Yeah, can you come get me? Yeah, I don't feel so good. Just come on in. I'll be lying on the floor. All right. So there's the pattern. So let's look at all the elements there. All right. So what happened? You had a stomach virus right? Not feeling good. What did he do or what did he think? He thought, I should call an ambulance for myself. So that's the thought. What's his opinion? Calling the ambulance for myself is weird. Now we have an opinion. How did he demonstrate that? He acted out how weird it would be to call the ambulance for himself. Boom, 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 right? And I see that pattern everywhere now. It's like, the ones and zeros in the matrix or seeing all of the the numbers in the matrix, right? So that is the format that I am now trying to write under and really wanting to just get very meticulous with my writing. I've never done that before. So I am starting over and I am throwing out all old material because most of my material does not fit that format. A lot of my old material, I was either using jokes or misdirection or wordplay or irony or, um, t- I mean, I was, just, I was doing everything else. And I hate that I'm going to say this because it sounds, I don't know, it just sounds weird for me to say this. And I don't know why it sounds weird. I haven't unpacked it. Honestly, it never felt right. Is that weird to say that? That my comedy never felt right? There was just something always... I just knew that there was something not right about how I was approaching this, and I didn't know what it was, and it was always so frustrating. And I did comedy for years with that feeling that, like, my written material, it just feels like I'm missing something here. This material is not in the pocket. It's not there's an element of this that doesn't feel, it just doesn't feel right. That, is that weird? But I really mean that. And, and I'm not trying, I, I, I know I, I kind of get maybe hard on myself or critical or self-deprecating. I'm not being self-deprecating. I really am trying to just be transparent and honest that for the 10 years that I've been doing stand-up, almost never did the material that I wrote and then presented on stage really feel like I had it. And it, and not like from, um, oh, this joke needs a little work, but like from a, I just don't feel like I'm even in the right lane here in how I'm approaching standup. Now that doesn't mean I wasn't funny. I got plenty of laughs. I've got plenty of laughs in my day. Um, you know, people thought I was funny but there was definitely something off. It's like I would never win comedy competitions. I would never advance. I was never the funniest. I was never the like bringing the house down comedian. The only time I've ever been the funniest is when I was improvising, when I was riffing, when I was doing crowd work, when I was off the cuff. When I was off the cuff, when I was improvising, I was in a different headspace and it felt that felt right to me. That felt like, yes, I am in the pocket. And when I say right, I don't mean morally. You know what I mean? That's why right is a weird word. And I don't know a better way to say it. 
Um, it's not like I was doing was wrong, but there was just something in my energy, something in my spirit, in my psyche, in my soul, if I have one, that it just didn't feel like I'm... I don't know any other word to use than doing it the right way. Um, and last night at the 9 o'clock show, when I tried my joke and I did it using the format and here's the thing about the format and and here's what my my buddy Andrew always said he's like you got to be honest now what does he mean by honest he's really talking about the opinion element of that what is your honest opinion so what I was doing before in so much of my material was I was not being honest per se. I I was really trying to be funny. I was trying to be ironic. I was trying to frick the audience with some sort of misdirection um, or trying to wit them, outwit them with some witty wordplay or... You know, I was trying to do pretty much anything but just expressing an honest point of view and then demonstrating my point of view in a comedic way. And that, it, and, and on one side, it's like, it's really overwhelming and daunting because I feel like I have to start over. But the other side of that is it's actually incredibly freeing now because I don't feel this kind of tension. I don't feel this stress that I used to feel all the time when I would do my written material because I felt that stress. I felt that something was off all the time. And it really, really hindered my desire to, to do it. You know, it, it, it was, it wasn't as enjoyable for me because I knew there was something off and, and I was still doing it. I was just kind of grinding and forcing my way to do stand up. But when I was in LA, I would quit all the time or I would go long periods of time without doing any stand up because I wasn't having fun. I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. And so I would try to find these other outlets that felt more natural and felt more right to me. And again, I don't like that I'm using the word right. It, it's not right in terms of a, a moral, ethical standpoint, but just right as in what's feeling natural and organic with with who I am as a, as a performer. And last night at the 9 p.m. show at JP's, I tried one new bit that I've written in that format, and it felt so right. It felt so natural, so organic, um, and it's not even worked out yet. But the premise, I'll, I'll tell you the joke. For those of you who've been watching every day, you might remember this, but it was, the premise was um, something along the lines of um, a friend of mine, she was complaining that a man matched with her on Tinder who clearly didn't read her Tinder profile. And I was just thinking to myself, uh, do the do women think that the men on Tinder read? So that's the first three, right? That's the first three of the fourth step. And then and then I well, I'll go on. So I was like, so do women think that the men on Tinder read? Because um I really don't think that the horny desperate men on Tinder are looking to read. I don't think they're looking for some nonfiction on a Friday night. You know, they're not going to curl up with their blanket, start reading chapter one, Cindy. 39 years old. Right. So do you see the format in there? What happened? Or what did I observe? What happened was a friend of mine was complaining that a man matched with her on Tinder who clearly didn't read her profile description. What did I think? I thought 
do the women or do do women think that men on Tinder read? That's what I thought. What was my opinion on that? Men on Tinder are not reading. Act out demonstration. A man reading profiles on Tinder, right? And overall, it went really great. I even tried a second part of that joke. Um, that didn't go as well. But even with even if it even though it wasn't going great, it still felt so much better. And I felt so present and I felt alive. And I was like, man, if I can come up with 60 more minutes of material that feels like this and then and actually go through the refinement process so it's really dialed in, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in a good spot. So that is what I'm working on. And I am going to build a new 60-minute set, and I'm going to do it five minutes at a time, five minutes of material. Matter of fact, um, I have my whiteboard up. I'll take a little screen grab of it and show you guys. So I have a whiteboard, and I just have it divided into 12 blocks. Uh, So it's 12 five-minute blocks, right? And I'm just going to start writing in the bits that I need to work out and really get... Um, honed in and get really tight and clean and I'm really excited to do that so I have the tinder bit that I did last night I have it recorded I've already watched it it wasn't painful to watch watching myself was always so painful I was actually watching this and I was laughing at myself and I'm going this looks like a comic who is just sharing his opinion he's not trying too hard He's just sharing an observation, sharing his opinion, and then demonstrating. And then I went into and I talked about a few other elements. Those other elements, um, they they didn't, they, they aren't worked out yet. But now I'm going, cool. Now I can start there and really in, in experiment. Well, how can I get this maybe to work a little bit better or, you know, I didn't really have a way to get out of this act out, right? Um, and now it's just the work. It's just putting in the work to to do that. But I feel like I have the tools now and the the guidance and the direction and, and sort of like, <laughs> it's like in bowling, you know, with, uh, like the kids, the little bumper lanes or whatever, so you don't go into the gutter. I feel like my buddy Andrew just kind of put the bumper lanes up. And it's just like, if you just stay within these bumper lanes, eventually you're going to hit some pins. <laughs> if you don't have these bumper lanes in and you try to do all this other stuff, you're going to end up in the gutter. And that's what I was feeling like. Speaking of act outs and demonstration. So that is where I am at. I, am at. I will be at JP's tonight. I'm going to challenge myself to maybe try two new bits in the 9 p.m. Uh, the 7 p.m., I'm probably just going to stick with improvisation because uh, usually I get 10 minutes in the 7 p.m. show, and by the time I do crowd work and then I sing a song, it's a lot of time, and so I don't want to run the risk of, of running the light. But in the 9 p.m. show, I usually get 15 minutes, so that'll give me like five minutes to maybe um, try a couple of my new jokes, and then obviously if they don't work, that's fine because I can always abandon ship and do some crowd work and do an improvised song. So that's where I'm at, everybody, on April 20th, 2024, in episode 143. Can you believe I've done 143 of these things? So I hope your dreams are going well, that whatever it is you're pursuing, whatever your passions are, that you are um, finding ways to feel good about what you're doing, trying to get whatever guidance or mentorship is necessary so that you do feel good about whatever workload it is that you're putting in so that you can have some good experiences, experience some joy, have a little bit of fun. I can tell you as a dreamer, it is so easy to get kicked down, to get discouraged, to get frustrated. And um, I'll tell you, any any little win, <laughs> celebrate it. Even just like, oh my gosh, I tried one new joke, and it didn't go horribly wrong. (laughs) Win. 
All right, everybody. So that's all for me today. I love you all so much. I hope you're doing well. Keep following those dreams. Don't give up. Um, keep looking for the, those little wins. And uh, let's uh, get some of these dreams together. So I will check in with you all tomorrow on the Paul Green Comedy Podcast. I love you so much. Thank you for listening.